All right, so recently we did a video where we built this uh, $567 gaming PC capable of, well, 105 FPS here in Resident Evil 2. Uh, one of the things we used in that was our RX, RX 580, and we talked about overclocking a little bit and how temperatures had actually reached uh, the low 80s. And a lot of people reached out to us and said, hey, you know that card is kind of known to have bad thermal paste from the factory. So what I thought we'd do today is kind of a, just a quick exploratory video where we take a look, do our temps actually improve if we change the thermal paste on this card? As you could probably hear, the fans are definitely running uh, near full speed and we're still getting 78C inside of Resident Evil 2 right here. 79, I've already seen 81 or 82. In fact, if we go ahead and quit out of here real quick, you'll see that there's definitely gonna be some headroom that we could probably find here. Origin PC builds high-performance custom PCs for gamers and professionals backed by a 24-7 US-based support team. Their award-winning high-end PCs offer the latest and best components for gaming and workstations. Origin PC also created exclusive desktop designs including Millennium and Genesis desktops with patented variable mounting technology and now offer a new lineup of laptops with GeForce RTX graphics cards. Customize your own Origin PC desktop or laptop with the Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD featuring read speeds of up to 3500 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 3300 megabytes per second. For more info on Origin PC systems and the Samsung 970 EVO Plus SSD, click the link in the description below. So the card in question here is the Radeon RX 580 by PowerColor. It's the Red Dragon variant, which is a more entry-level card, although it has a backplate and a dual fan cooler. If we take a look at uh, MSI Afterburner here, for about the last, uh, I don't know, 25 minutes or so, maybe 30 minutes, I was playing Resident Evil 2. You can see the temperatures curve up fairly quickly, but then you can see we definitely hit the 70s, upper 70s, and then here we hit 81. And then as I went to the menu and stuff to start talking to you guys, it comes down to like the upper 70s. So we hit a max of 82, which in my opinion, for a card that is still, in, I mean, on the warmer side, the RX 580 can get pretty warm if you have like the reference cooler on there. For a dual cooler heat pipe card like this, I feel like we should definitely be getting some better temperatures than that. Now this video that we're gonna do right now also is gonna to apply to pretty much any graphics card, not just an RX 580, but any graphics card, even those that are using a Founders Edition or reference style cooler, you can uh, still probably get some better temperatures by changing it out to a better thermal paste and then even reseeding the cooler because uh, a lot of you guys seem to think that this issue that we were seeing was uh, directly related to thermal paste with this card. I figured we would at least see if that was valid or not. Now we do have an overclock applied here with a plus 25 on the core voltage. A lot of you guys said undervolt the card, undervolt. I found that I could not get 1450 stable without me running about a plus 25 on here. Zero volts or zero additional volts was not stable. I haven't tried necessarily undervolting, but for the sake of today's video and keeping everything consistent, because we need to make sure we're not introducing any variables that could skew our results. We're leaving all those settings as they are right there. You're also gonna notice we are running 55C right now at idle because this card does have a zero RPM idle mode where the fans don't turn and they offer silence instead of cooling. So it's a bit warm on the idle. That's normal because like I said, we are not actually turning the fans. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and break open the card and see what we find. So given the fact that this card has four heat pipes and a dual fan with heat sink on here, I was kind of expecting these temperatures to be better. Now this could also technically void your warranty, although it's kind of a gray area where I guess manufacturers technically aren't allowed to void your warranty by taking something apart. But there is a sticker on this particular card over one of the screw holes. So yeah, you don't, uh, do this at your own risk, obviously. Don't say, Jay told me to do this. He's responsible. He made me avoid my warranty. That ain't gonna fly, so don't even try it. There we go. Well, I don't know if I'd go as far as to say that it was a bad thermal paste application, but that's what it looks like nonetheless. It's definitely thick. I mean, a lot of the thermal paste used from the factories is extremely heavy and very thick. So I'm hoping that by us going with some of the more traditional stuff I use with water blocks that we might see a little bit of an improvement here. It's also interesting to see that two memory chips here have extra sealant like around them. I wonder why these two chips have a different type of mounting than these other ones here. We got some in the corner of the actual socket as well. It's also interesting too, the way these sockets are kind of mounted at a, or these, these chips are mounted at a 45 degree angle. Not that I, it really matters. So I just, I've never really seen that before. Okay, so as with, any sort of 
DIY like this, you assume a certain level of risk and responsibility. And because when you're dealing with GPU dies like this, you are dealing with SMDs that are exposed and transistors and resistors that are right here on the surface. You want to be very careful when you go to clean the thermal paste off. You don't want to use anything that's gonna necessarily be grabby. In fact, a lot of people would probably even say don't use a paper towel like I am right now, but I've done this so much I'm comfortable with it. You might wanna use maybe a coffee filter or something like that, which is less fibrous. It's not gonna leave little fibers like that's kind of leaving on there. And you wanna make sure that you get all of this off without getting hooked on any of these and accidentally pulling them off, which is what paper towels and any sort of cloth can actually do. I've never seen a plate that mounts down to the pipes like this. I'm curious now, if I undo these, will that plate come off? Because if so, that's another layer of transfer, right? So if there's thermal paste that goes between this plate and the heat pipes, that could be a, a thing too. Like why is this screwed down like that? You know, I've never seen this before on a air-cooled card. It's almost like maybe they put down like a solder or a flux and then, and then they screw it down and then it cures. To hold it. Yeah, that could be it, but that's not popping off and I'm not gonna force it. So this is direct dye, so we want to use a lot, in my opinion, because we want to cover every square millimeter of it, and it is going to squish over to the sides, and that's perfectly fine. This is non-conductive Ecotherm from EK, which we use on our water blocks. So you guys want to make sure, obviously, <clears throat> if you're using any sort of thermal paste, that it's non-conductive, although most thermal paste these days are not conductive any longer. So, I mean, depending on your graphics card, you may or may not have a ton of screws, or a thermal paste glob that got jammed in the card or something, but you may have a million screws that go around the perimeter and stuff. So you just wanna be very careful as you're taking it apart that you make sure that you got all the screws out before you go trying to pry it apart. Otherwise you could accidentally damage your card and you don't want that because then you'll cry. And then you won't be able to play games. You won't be able to play Fortnite anymore. And then you'll cry not just because you're a child, but because you can't play Fortnite. Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Okay, hopefully we still have video. All right, so everything is running. It's gonna take some time for this to obviously heat up, but look, it's at 33, 34. That doesn't really count, but we just fired it on, right? We just put clean thermal paste. It's as cool as it could possibly be. But just to show that all of our settings are the same, nothing's changed, same factory fan curve and all that sort of stuff. Let's go ahead, go back into Resident Evil 2. Same thing, same spots. No tomfoolery here, or jfoolery, or whatever. Jfoolery. <laughs> All right, so as you can see right now, we, we just hit 81. So clearly there was no change. I'm in the exact same spot too that I was even. There's no change whatsoever to the temperature in this particular instance. That doesn't mean it wouldn't necessarily be a fix for you because if you've been running your graphics card for hard for the last year or two, your thermal paste is probably nice and hard and kind of thickened up, if that makes sense. And you could benefit from this. So I would still highly recommend it if you're comfortable with taking your card apart and replacing the thermal paste. We did this in the past with an old GTX 580 that used to belong to Coconut Monkey. And uh, we saw it came down like six degrees in his case. But as you can see, I'm sitting 81 right now and we are not getting, it's exactly the same, that 81, oh, there's 82 even. So, but what, will affect your system more than anything else is obviously the case airflow. So I still stand by what I said in that video where if you take your case and you open it up, and by opening it up, that could also mean not just taking the side panel off, but also giving better airflow through the, pan through the case because we've got one intake fan, one exhaust fan, which in my opinion is not enough for this particular amount of heat that this card can put off. I took the side panel off. You can see we've already come down two degrees down to 79. And the longer I play, this will actually continue to come down over time. There's 78. And that has everything to do with the fact that the card is now able to uh, get fresh air that's recirculating because a cooler like this that is exhausting air into the, cha the chassis or the case, it's the chassis responsibility to take the heat out of the case. And this one is just not doing a good job of it because we have one low RPM, 120 millimeter fan right here in the back. And as you can see right here, it's uh, already coming down in temperatures. Not as fast as I would like. Oh, there's 77 for a second there. Just like it takes a while for the card to heat up, it can take a while for it to cool off as well. And in fact, we have ways of speeding that up around here. 
There we go. Well, even with like a thousand CFM or whatever this fan is capable of moving, it's stopped at 75. So maybe the moral of the story is, oh, 74. Improvements. All right, so maybe the moral of the story is when you buy a lesser end graphics card, you get what you pay for. And in this instance, the cooler is doing what it's designed to do, a mediocre job. But we can still play without any sort of throttling. It's still 1450 megahertz when it was 82 degrees or 75 in this case with a box fan plugged into it. You can still play games and on a budget PC, you kind of got to go, well, what exactly do you want out of it? But what we just showed you though, like I said, does apply to any graphics card for the most part. So if you got a graphics card that was running great and now it's running really hot and you haven't changed anything, you might want to start by taking a look at your thermal paste. So there you go. This is one of those videos we did specifically because of the comment section. So um, I just felt like we'd do it. Hopefully this taught you something. Hopefully it taught you to not be afraid to service your own components, even though it has a warranty void sticker. So obviously, like I said, that one's on you in terms of whether or not you want to avoid your warranties to do this. So I'm gonna go guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Okay, so recently, recently, recently we did a video. Can you hear me?